And, 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 you know, we aren't paid to push the barrow of seven. No. We're not. No, we're not. But seven did very well yeah. with eight logies. Eight logies? Eight logies. The know. ABC came second with seven logies. Yes. Uh, Channel 9 came third <laughs> with, <laughs> with the big six. Yeah. Uh, followed by, uh, of course, SBS and 10, who did very well indeed themselves. Mm. But uh, I blew into uh, the Channel 9 party. Mm -hmm. Very sullen. Mm. Very... <laughs> this was at Crown last night. Very mm. down in the dumps. Mm. Very, where, do, where do we go from here? Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very bleak. Used to be the one, you yeah. know, things are now... <laughs> we're tired and we're buggered and we're old and we're weird and nobody likes us anymore. But uh, I think there's a future there if they work on it. Yeah, I do. I do. And the other thing to come out of it was was seeing Bert again and how good Bert was. Oh, incredible! I, I, thought, I thought Bert stole the show. Stole later. the show. Sean was yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. Sean was. Sean McAuliffe was very, very good. Uh, but Bert came out and the old skills. Uh, yeah. The old yeah. skills that go back to vaudeville, that yeah. go back to the tube. Yeah, some of the jokes go that, back that far too. Oh, I've heard them all before. Yeah. 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 But you like hearing them again, don't I you? I loved hearing them again. Yeah. They were so old it was refreshing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Tremendous. Yeah. So, uh, so that was the night. And, and I do like that head in that context too. Yes. Very big, but very, very solid. Big. Yes. <laughs> very big. Very yes. big. And Bert can kick on once the, once the rest of Australia goes widescreen. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now, yeah, a whole new career. Uh, in the Ring of Fire, uh, tonight we've got a tremendous audience and uh, people from the Melbourne Tram Attendance Organisation yes. are here. I think they're taking up the front row. I don't know if we can get a snap of them. We've got Colonial Stadium star. Yes. Where about the Colonial Stadium star? Over in the corner there, that's great. Good. And we've got competition winners, I think, from, uh, is it the Murdoch paper, the Herald Sun? Yes. yes. Competition winners. And a couple of... Ah, uh, uh, yes, good. Good. And a couple of... Um, People who work on the, um, writing up the articles, or as I like to call it, creating the fiction at the Herald Sun. I, I think we've got Cameron Smith and Tony Johnson. It's tremendous to have all those on board. Great journos. Yes, great journos. Now, I think the big story this week, without a doubt, uh, is this tremendous, tremendous thing that the Colin isn't the Collingwood Football Club go ahead? Uh, I mean, sure they've forgotten about how to win football matches, but that doesn't seem to be holding them back at all. Because last week they announced this nexus, and the breakthrough that I've been race waiting for is to join racing with football. Here's some pictures we took with the uh, the Super 8 camera of the lads. There's uh, Nathan Buckley and uh, Damian Oliver. They're trying to get a horse to eat a carrot, not a football, which is the right thing to do. And here's all the boys there. There's the forward line trying to feed a horse. The horse doesn't look very interested, as is often the case in racing. And here's the uh, strapper there. And look at that stupid hat on the horse. And there's Damian Oliver wondering what the hell he's gotten into. Uh, he's going to be wearing the colours, the black and white colours. Roy, is this, is this something you're going to give the thumbs up to? Uh, H.O., I'm very excited. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited by the concept. Uh, mainly because you're going to get a lot of uh, horse fans, mm. and there are many, who are going to see the, the Collingwood colours and think, bloody hell, mm. football, I might get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and conversely, you're going to get uh, Collingwood fans in particular, uh, who are going to think, horses. Yes. And H.O., I think it's going to get the kiddies into, into, into uh, gambling on horses. Yes. And I think... <laughs> I think that's I, I think that's really good. You're going to have kids saying, you know, Mum, Dad, can we bet on, yeah. you know, whatever the horse might be? Well, Let's say it's uh, Sav Rocker. Sav Rocker. Yeah. <laughs> Mum, can I put can I put five dollars on Sav Rocker today? Yeah. You know, yeah. before we go to the game yeah. and you know, listen to the results and yeah. that sort of thing. I think it's terrific. <laughs> yes. For I, the economy. Oh, the economy. <laughs> and, and fans. And of fans. Both football and racing are not enough done for the fans these days. No. I must say though, the naming of the horses that you raise does. Uh, does pose a couple of problems. Yes. Uh, Mickey, the Eddie Maguire. The Eddie Maguire. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Mickey Morehouse has a bit yes. of ring to it. Yes. And there might have to be the Ant Rocker as opposed to the Sav Rocker, who I think might have departed the Collingwood Colours and right. has moved on to another mm. club. The other thing I'd like to think of is maybe they could get some concepts going. You know how horses are named after concepts. Uh, yeah. You know, Victoria Park. Yes. Um, or or the, the Big Win in 92. Yeah, the Big Win in 92. <laughs> Which one was that? Here comes the Big Win in 92. 92. Yeah, down the outside. Yeah. Yeah. But you also might get the horses turning up at the game. Oh, what a nice Leading idea. Leading out the team. Yes. <laughs> clippity pop, clippity pop. Going through the yeah. run through. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Through and the, the other thing is, actually, it gives the opportunity for your smaller man yes. to get involved in football. Yes. <laughs> and you know how often a horse breaks down, and I don't like raising this, but it's true, sometimes a horse has an unlucky accident, then a Collingwood player might be able to give it, you know, the kiss of death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
screens come out. Ladies and gentlemen, our celebrity shooter today is... <laughs> Tony Shaw. Tony uh, Shaw. Yeah, I'm gonna say. <laughs> now, The other thing which I think has captured the nation's imagination is this marvellous, uh, the marvellous idea of the uh, National Gallery in Canberra, it's nothing to do with sport, but uh, I, I think it is a sort of a sporting picture, uh, is to buy this nude picture, there's a three, a threesome in the nude, uh, in this picture by Lucian Freud. I think we've got a picture of this and I hope everybody in the room can see it. There it is there. Uh, it's a beauty. I think we only have to pay $8 million for it and a lot of people are sneering at it at that price. I think it's an absolute steal at that price. I've had a look at this really close up with a magnifying glass and I think it's worth roughly $23.5 million. But really, it's, it tells a story like all great art. Yeah. What's the story it's telling? Uh, well, to my mind, HG, you've got a couple, a young couple who've been on the job. Mm. <laughs> 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 He's, he's sort of performed in the, in the Collingwood colours, so to speak. And, uh, and in the Collingwood manner. <laughs> and, um, and the servant has uh, poked the head in and realised that, well, they're nude still, so she's taken the gear off to bring in the, <laughs> to bring in the pizza or the, the cup of tea. And you'll notice the cups are in Collingwood colours, too. Yeah. Which is nice. <laughs> but, um, I think it's a beautiful story. Yes. It's a beautiful story that Australians can, can relate to. And I think it's going to get kids involved in art and interesting. <laughs> Now, the other thing about it is, is I think uh, it, uh, it does, to me, tell a different story that they started on the top of the stairs, if we can go back to the picture, and they fell down the stairs in, while they were on the job. Oh, yes. And they were rather disappointed, and they knocked over that chair there, as you can see there, and the maid <laughs> tiptoed in to uh, hope that everything was okay and brought in a, a disparate each. Oh, they were really really off chance. On the off chance they needed. And my yeah. problem is that yeah. sort of black rectangle at the top of the picture. Oh, yeah. Well, there's That's nothing happening. Yeah, well, there. Yeah. You can see it yeah, there. Yeah, nothing happening. Yeah. But the no, no, well, that adds an air of mystery to it. Yes. Maybe they were on the chair, working on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and the leg we can't see broke. <laughs> See, whatever. See, it's just a beautiful story. And yeah, that's what's marvellous about That's what's marvellous about art, especially modern art. Now, then we come to this amazing thing that happened uh, in a match. I think it might have been at uh, Ballymore in Brisbane. Mm. It was... Uh, Dion Kayser playing in the match was tackled by a Queensland supporter who loomed up out of the crowd and it really gave it to him. I hope we can see this now. You watch the highlighted dot yeah. of the player, the extra player, coming out of the crowd there. There Whack. he goes, Dion Kayser. <laughs> and then, of course, Kayser wants to go on with it, which I thought was quite unfair. The, the extra player goes into the crowd, bumps his head, and is apprehended by a couple of idiots with, uh, you know, obviously uh, maroon supporters' hats on. Uh, <laughs> Roy, have you ever seen anything like that? Here we see it in a, from a different angle. There he is. He's got Kayser down, and up he goes. And up he goes. wants to go on yeah, with Kayser it. Yeah, wants to go on with it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lad is looking for extra work out there, and he's hungry yeah. to get involved. Yeah. Have you ever encountered anything like that, Roy? Have you ever thought of doing that yourself? I have, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like crowd involvement. Mm. Um, I think it adds a new dimension. Uh, to any code. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, just randomly uh, someone should be able to, I don't know, through winning of a prize, winning of a lottery, winning of something, should be able to at any stage of a match just enter it and <laughs> create a bit of what we might call elastic mayhem. Um, <laughs> uh, just go out there and king hit someone. Uh, the, the other thing is, actually, I, I've, I've been uh, on the case for a long time for uh, counselling of fans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, to out. Yeah, sometimes fans get a little bit too involved, a little right. bit too close, and uh, need, uh, you know, sitting on the couch and having a watch dangled in front of them. Oh, and this is obviously a case of that. Oh. But sometimes players get up your nose. Players yeah. get up your nose oh, so yeah. bloody much. Yeah. So much. You, you just want to go out there and do something, do Yeah, you do. Yeah. Was it? Did you, how yeah. did you score the last... Anthony Kudafidis, for example. Yes. Sometimes yes. he gets right up my nose. Does he? Yes. You know, and I think the next time I see that one... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll let him know how he'll that one. Yeah. Now, how did you rate the kid, the run on the extra player's performance? Uh, did you give it best on the Oh, it was a terrific tackle. Yeah, terrific <laughs> tackle. 
And now, of course, uh, regular dump viewers will know each, uh, each Monday night we set an Interpol... Uh, sorry, Interpol. Interpol. Inter Are they involved? <laughs> Interpol. <laughs> we internet. did it. <laughs> Hands up. Trudeau, he was ours. Uh, an internet uh, poll challenged to the nation. And these results, the results of this poll will be fed into uh, the various systems around the place. And we're hoping that you'll be able to input yeah. uh, through the net site, uh, the, the dump net site. Roy, take us through the internet challenge for the evening. Yeah, the internet challenge is as follows, HG. At last night, Log as la at last night's Logies, yes. uh, international singing star Ricky Martin, A, A, mimed quite convincingly, <laughs> B, insulted the audience by miming, C, mimed as well as Kylie, yes. or D, looked really stupid miming. Yes. Uh, so... <laughs> and uh, that website is themondaydump.i7.com.au. And you can uh, send us messages at any stage yes. during the questions, yes, questions, advanced theories, yep. uh, maybe uh, draw attention to when the uh, Collingwood Club is yep. going to produce a horse that's going to win the Melbourne Cup. Yep. That's one thing I'd like to see. <laughs> or if you just want your name mentioned on uh, national television. Yes, and uh, as we go to that uh, poll on the internet, uh, we uh, promise you there'll be more dump right after this. <laughs> And now on the dump, it's uh, time to welcome the Gold Logie winner for 2001, Ms. Georgie Parker. Yeah. Now... Just by the by, do you catch trams anywhere, Georgie? You know yes. what? I'd love to catch a tram. I love trams. Yes. My mum was raised in Melbourne, and I, it was a treat to catch a tram. Yes, yes, good. And, you know, when you come down here, do you get about and think, bloody hell, I'll just put on a scarf and slip down to, um, I don't know, <laughs> Turak. Over my head? Yes, that's right, Turak. <laughs> One of those? Yes, that's right. <laughs> no, I don't. Look, Should I? <laughs> well, I just, just thought, I'd suggest it, given the help that we've had filling the front row of the audience here this evening. Uh, look, uh, last night, of course, let's have a look at you in action last night, getting the gold. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, it brings back so oh, many memories, of course. Georgie Parker. Yeah. Oh, no, you're looking very relaxed. Oh, it's hell am I? I, I actually have to be honest with you, I don't really understand this. I don't really know what it means, but, but it's very pretty. Um, and um, can I have the cast of All Saints up here, please? Come on, quick sticks. Up here, up here. Up here now. And John, John Holmes, Joe Porter, Di Drew, can you come up here, please? Quick sticks. I'm honoured to get this, and I'm honoured to share it with the cast and the crew and everyone who's worked on the show. Yes, that's very, very good. Now, you've, had, you've had the Logie approximately 24 hours. Do you understand it any better now? I've had quite a few people try to explain it to me today. Yes, have you? What, what's the best theories you've... <coughs> that's very important, and I should have just said thank you very much. <laughs> no, 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 that... No, I haven't had anyone elaborate on it for me. I mean, could you enlighten me? I think it's based on popular vote to TV Week magazine that, that people right? subscribe to or can Is purchase that? in mm. news agencies. Yeah. And there was a coupon in it, and they <laughs> filled out your name. <laughs> how many, which begs the question, how many TV Weeks did you buy? And Zip. Out, uh, None. Yourself? None. Because I heard I years ago that. you... Oh, yes. Oh, this is very interesting. Yeah. No, it wasn't myself. I, when I got up to, to receive a silver award, my good friend Kate Raison had actually, as a, as a lark, come over to my house and, and we had three TV weeks there and she filled them out. And I, as a joke, said, and I'd like to thank Kate Raison for staying up all night and filling out those forms. And then the next day, the guys were going, so do you think they're rigged? Uh, I said, uh, um, uh, that's how you vote. Right. How yeah. can you rig the way you vote? I don't understand that, but that, no, no, that yeah. explains that. Now, do you think networks do this? Do you think networks, the <laughs> publicity staff, would buy, say, a couple of thousand TV weeks and fill them out to get their <laughs> people up? 
because it looked to me as if uh, why uh, David Leckie and Channel 9 were so disappointed last night they didn't is because it. they didn't do it or oh, they, yeah. didn't, <laughs> they didn't think of it. You I, know, I would say... Because they're der brains over there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I would say I have no idea what to say to that, actually. Because no, no, no. <laughs> I did read where you only need about 300 votes to win. I've been no, told, I don't, I don't really? want to talk it down at all. Yeah, no, I don't want to talk it down, mate. I'm talking up. I tell you what, for a silver, I, I understand you only need four votes to four win. Four votes for silver. Yeah, just, That's my understanding. So, yeah, maybe for there. the gold, you might need three or four hundred. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, I'd say so. Uh, as I understand, it's something about the fans' input into the television industry of awarding something towards the people they feel most close mm. to, which is a lovely touch. Now, speaking of that, uh, yes. All Saints is the program, of course, for which yes, you've got the gold. Yes. We've got a beautiful clip here, I think coming from tomorrow's program. Right. No, this, we, this is, no, from a past program, I think. From a past, past program. Long, um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Of course, you return to the show tomorrow, I think, yes, after yes. a bit of a layoff. That's right. Long yes, service leave. Let's no. have a look at that clip now. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> Oh, she's missing Dad. How about you? I'm all right. I will be. Didn't expect to feel this lost. Well, you know what? They framed yeah. out. Yes. You know, uh, I, was, I was like 32 weeks pregnant in that shot. So yes. that's why um, I was... Everything was very intense. Yeah. Yeah. Everything had an, in, an, an implied dramatic, yeah. you know, tone to it because yeah. they had to shoot me in close-up. Yeah. And being a nun, it would have been Difficult. awkward ha if you appeared to be... <laughs> it was, unless it was divine intervention, and then the show would have just gone on a tangent. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. Can I ask about this, the you escaped from the nunnery now. I mean, I don't mean to put it like the that. The great escape. You, the great escape. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, there's been a smouldering situation with Dr. Mitch on the show. Mm. It's all about beds, your show. Is there going to be any more action between your character and Dr. Mitch bed-wise mm. in coming episodes? That's a very forward question. Mm. Um, we haven't shot anything yet, right. but I reckon... I reckon you can only tease an audience so much. You're absolutely right. You've got to deliver. Oh, yeah, you've got to deliver sooner or later. We don't want to be known as the... I won't use the term, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Of Australian TV. Yeah, the day trip of Australian TV. So I think sooner or later we're going to have to deliver the big one. Now, speaking of this, do the audience, through net sites and mail, you know, ordinary mail, make suggestions about, you know, how Dr. Mitch may not be the one for you. You've come out of the nunnery. You know, get yourself a better bloke. Uh, you know, maybe ta you know, try and get a part for Sean McAuliffe in it. And I then love Sean McAuliffe. I would him. love him you know to come I mean? in and sweep me off my feet. Yeah. I but love him. Do they suggest, do the audience suggest things? The audience suggests themselves a lot. Oh, yeah. I, I, Are they a suggestive I, I, audience? A very suggestive audience, yeah. Like lewd pictures like we've seen already. Tonight. Well, I, I must admit this was, was quite leading and I thought, well, what kind of show have I agreed to be on? But, but I, can I tell you what I think this picture's about? Yes, Why please. Not? Yes, please. Why not? I think this man is spent. No, no, sorry. No, no, I rephrased that. Is that a medical term? I, I got it wrong. It, it, you it, mean post-coital? No, I think, I think he had trouble uh -huh. and he couldn't deliver the mail, yes. so to speak. And this girl's going, don't worry about it. And this one's bringing in the Viagra. Going, I know what will fix this up. Wow. That's what I think. Oh, well, that's great. It's, 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 do you see yourself as a role model for, uh, <laughs> for the younger set, for the young kids now? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, I hope not. I, no. I really hope I'm not a role model. I, um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it depends on what role you've got. I think, you know, playing a nun, people would love you to be a role model. Yes. Yeah. Well, you always play really credible people. Don't you? You do. Because I am You're a really good person. At it. <laughs> no, you're really good at it. I mean, I mean we have some footage from uh, country practice. Oh, I think we do. I think oh, if we've got a chance to squeeze that in. You were a nurse in that. Yeah, she's got it all out. She said laxative, she said sulfur. I don't care if she's had a pint of castor oil, sister. This is your place to initiate treatment. We're talking about soap and water, Matron, not some dangerous drug. The patient requested, in fact, she insisted that she have an enema. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now, we so understand... Either one end or the other, yes, isn't it? that's right. We understand the patient was down with gastric. <laughs> Would you recommend uh, an enema for gastric? And this raises the question whether, if you're at home tonight, suffering from an illness, you tune into All Saints, can you follow the steps to health 
through the program, through the diagnosis, <laughs> through what the doctors recommend drug-wise. I bloody well hope so. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> and on that point, uh, Georgie Parker, look, no one goes away from this show empty-handed. We'd like to present you with this souvenir belt buckle. I'm yeah. on it. Of the, the program. One. The Is first the one. one. They're all numbered. And here's the first oh, belt buckle. I'm on it, guys. It's the Thank flapping so dunny. There you are. <laughs> They're original designs, aren't they? Original designs by Reg Mombasa. Oh, I love Reg. Yeah. Now, if you could just hold it up in an appropriate position for the snap, and please thank Georgie Parker! <laughs> left on the canvas, his jaw required wiring in eight places, and his right eye was hanging out of its socket. A pummeling of his left ear damaged the drum to such an extent that permanent hearing loss was the inevitable result. At the time, doctors gave Bunnett little or no chance of surviving, but survive he did. And this is the man who all those years ago gave him the worst flogging of his life, and whom he hasn't seen since that night. Former Korean middleweight champion, Kim Il-jong. So many memories. <laughs> and if you've got an old sparring partner or an army buddy or somebody you um, were in a car accident with and you'd like to see them again, you haven't seen them for many, many years, then get in touch with us at our next site. Uh, which Roy's got the address of. It's uh, themondaydump.i7.com.au. Yes. And, and that internet poll, too. Yes. Actually. While, while you're there, you can vote in the poll. And we will be feeding the results of tonight's poll straight through to Ricky Martin's management after the show. <laughs> Roy, what is that question again? What's that uh, the question? The question was, at last night's Logies International Series, are Ricky Martin, A, mimed quite convincingly, B, insulted the audience by miming, C, mimed as well as Kylie, yes. or D, looked really stupid miming. Yes. <laughs> That's all up there at the moment. Now, yep. Roy, bodybuilding. It's a tremendous sport, and there's a couple of principles before we go to our film package, which I think you should uh, try and include the audience in on. Mm. Uh, techniques, especially to do with the makeup and oil before the... Uh, before the process of judging. Yes. yes. Look, I, I, I've been a big rap for bodybuilding for a long time, HG, uh, especially amongst the younger set. Uh, I, I try to get the kids involved because it gives you confidence. <laughs> confidence and, from what, Roy? And, and it, well, it, it makes you learn to love yourself. You know, so many... <laughs> So many people these days, especially young kids, have no idea of how to love themselves. Mm. Mm. And I think it's important to get self-esteem back. And bodybuilding gives you that. And, uh, and makes you really terrific to look at. Not only, <laughs> not only in the mirror, but uh, out and about. Yes, with you the know, shirt on. Clothes look really good on you. Yes, yes. You know? yes. The two techniques I was trying to get you to talk about was the applying of makeup. Oh, yes, you put a lot of... <laughs> You put a lot of paint on, body paint, yeah. and that's Avoiding to accentuate... Avoiding the head. Avoiding the head, yes. Yes, yes. And you put the body paint on, and that uh, accentuates the, the muscular... Uh, well, the muscles itself. Definition. Yeah, the definition, that's yes. the word. Yes. And the symmetry, mm. and then you smear yourself in oil, mm, yeah. which goes back to the old days when... Uh, oil smearing was popular. <laughs> When bodybuilders used to love rubbing against each other. Oh, yes. You yes. Know, just to get that little sort of sort of noise happening is there. <laughs> Maybe that's the exact combination, right? <laughs> now, we went to a body off, uh, International Federation of Bodybuilding Grand Prix, or Pricks if you like. And uh, it was held in Melbourne, John Batman Theatre. Let's go to our film footage now. And so here we are backstage at the John Batman Theatre at uh, Roy. What's going on here in the body off? Yes, always, uh, just prior to competition HG, it's, it's frantic backstage with uh, the participants uh, putting on the body colouring, as you can see uh, in the uh, background there, and uh, rubbing themselves and uh, generally getting the blood circulating towards the muscles and getting the oil applied so that they can look at their absolute very best. And here we go to the competition now. First up is Melbourne Anthony. Marvellous Melbourne from the United States, Roy. Very fit, 
very balanced loves to adjust the tackle before he uh, before he zooms into it and that number 10 i can't take my eyes off that number 10 i don't know why take us through it, it's, it's, he's a real character uh, melvin he, he, he's been great for bodybuilding and it's it's revolutionary what he's done with this sport by introducing the glasses to the act but he's got to show how much he loves himself yes. and if he he figures if he loves himself we're going to love him as well and at the same time striking some poses that show him at his best Oh, fatality. Uh, terrific work. You know, you could, uh, you, to tire of watching Marvellous Melbourne is to tire of life. That's absolutely right. And next up is the uh, Oleg Zua from the Czech Republic, doing a bit of moonwalking there, Roy. Yeah, he's, he's very modern and very European at the same time. He, he likes to pull his head into shape. HGR, I don't he's, and isn't the relationship between his head and his body good? Isn't their heads come from somewhere else, from another planet? <laughs> uh, he's fantastic, though. And Roy, the ab, uh, the six-pack here. Uh, yes. It's a tremendous six-pack there as we just see him finishing his routine. And oh, I think there he is. Oh, there's no, there's, there's the pack now. That. He's got to get the head into position now. Still not right. Come on, pull it around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> And so flexible. So flexible and so yeah. modern, in, as you mentioned, the European style. Yeah. Next out, Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier, nicknamed The Real Deal. Yeah. And that too, I think it's a bit high on the trunk. I'd like to see it down just that little bit further. Yeah. And what a story the uh, Real Deal story is, Roy. He's great, actually. He's been just as having the most attractive neck in the world. And look <laughs> at that neck there. That's really showing it at its, at, at its best. And wouldn't Palaco or someone like that love to make a shirt for him? <laughs> and, Roy, he's got a couple of pythons upstairs, and he yes. appears to have shoved a couple of... Uh, um, you know, bigger snakes yeah. <laughs> into uh, a couple of balloons for his legs. <laughs> Look, Look at that, it's wrestling there like an anaconda. That's right. <laughs> and again, I think Chris loves him. He's, he's telling us he loves himself and is quite comfortable with himself. And, and that's important. And look, uh, look at this. Uh, look at that. Yeah, look at that neck, there. eh? Imagine where the tie would go. <laughs> <laughs> and what a tie to be. What a tie to be to get around that whole bulk up there. And now, finally, uh, in this uh, early stage, is Dennis James of Thailand. Yeah. Look at the movement here, oh, Roy. He's a cool rock and dude, this bloke, <laughs> isn't he? He's got it all, all the moves. And look at Whoa, this. look at that. Body popping. He might even do a bit of moonwalking. He's, he's great, this bloke. He's really good for uh, world body bodybuilding except his stomach's just not quite right is it it's, it's too big isn't it yes yes he's got to work on that stomach and get that <laughs> that's a great job isn't it he's got to work on that six pack to make yeah. it more definition as we'll hopefully yeah. see a little bit of it there he's working on the six pack yeah. and that one's in about well he can't quite work out his yeah. number it might be in the right position if we can get a wider shot there it is <laughs> he's a character <laughs> and he does love himself actually he does i mean you can tell you can and you know, that doesn't come easy often to these blokes ours in front of the mirror roy yeah. saying i'm bloody great and i'm better than anybody else here and there it is the final jump <laughs> up and down again as he, he looks leaves good. us looking good man leaves us wanting more and here's the results the now roy take us through it yes chris call me a first hg dennis james second uh oleg zua whom we looked at was sixth and melvin anthony seventh how do you rate it roy the best you've ever seen one of the best i've seen certainly this year <laughs> Yes, Roy, and uh, I think it's fair to say is you've got a theory about the bulk upstairs or in the legs compared with the bulk in the it's trunk. It's inversely proportional, isn't yes, it, to, to the, the bulk, bulk in, in the, the trunk? trunk. Uh, some of them, all they can do is pin a number on it. That's right. We'll be back with more dump right after this. This is the news from rural and regional Australia. I'm Anthony Kudafidis. In Orange, a new recycling machine is being hailed as a breakthrough for regional development. The XTES Megabyte can turn concrete blocks and other building waste into piles of reusable rubble. The Megabyte was made in the UK but improved by Australian engineers. It can process 230 tonnes of material every hour. Magnets are used to remove steel from the byproduct leaving reusable concrete chunks used for road base, landfill or concrete cast products. Tony Buchanan operates this machine. Oh yes, it'll be over 20,000 tonne here. <laughs> Dubbo's first official radio survey has finally revealed that just who rules the airways in New South Wales, third largest inland city. 
The Corrales Networks, 2DU, claimed the title of most popular station with 50% of the market. But it was newcomer Star FM that shook the polls, claiming over 50% of the 18 to 35 age demographic. We came to Dubbo offering music and light entertainment, and it appears that Dubbo seems to be enjoying what we're doing. <laughs> the first wave of graduation ceremonies for two, 2001 has begun at Charles Sturt University in Bathurst. Health study students were the first to receive their degrees earlier this afternoon. Today's ceremony was the culmination of years of hard work for the students. They can now fill much needed health positions around the state. Three and a half years long, it's all worth it today. Yeah, pretty proud and uh, good to see a few of the other people around. It's really nice. a good day. In sport, paragliders from around New South Wales and Queensland have competed in the first paragliding state of origin held off Manila's Mount Bora. Among the daredevils was newcomer Wayne Bailey from Mudgee, complete with his camera. <laughs> the locals were joined by, by a number of internationals. They were impressed not only by the perfect flying conditions, but also by Mount Bora's spectacular vistas. Just got all the launches, so I got all the wind directions covered. It's open all around, so you can you know, go wherever you want. Yeah, it's great. And finally, Australian Standard Hardweed is selling at $162.50 US per ton. That's down $1 from last week. The Eastern Indicator wool price is selling at 839 cents a kilo, which has softened a little from last week. And that's it for the news. I'm Anthony Kudafidis. Tremendous. Now, uh, we had a story earlier in the show about the Collingwood Club getting into horse racing. Uh, would you like to see the Carlton Club follow suit and really d throw down the gauntlet to the uh, Magpies? Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a great rival in years to come. Collingwood versus Carlton, the horses racing out there in Mooney yeah. Valley. Once the clubs have given up playing football, they can <laughs> keep an interest in sport. The betting, the gambling, the money again. Yes. Who knows? Do, does the club come up with weird things like this that you often think, oh, God, here they go again? Well, I guess we've got a few characters down at the club. Yes. And gambling's a high priority on a lot of, a lot of their minds. Yes. And so is golf. And I golf. think golf's a bit funny in some ways, too. Yes. I do, too. Yes. Uh, Anthony, HG uh, and myself uh, were out at Optus Oval uh, <clears throat> last weekend and uh, saw the game against Adelaide. Two things emerged from mine. What's happened to the, to the idea of gloves in wet weather for uh, assisting with the uh, taking of marks? Because so the, ha the handling was pretty bloody ordinary, mate, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the ball was actually like a piece of soap. It was a piece it? of soap, yeah. yeah. Now, the gloves. Gloves were well, all the fashion about ten years ago. What's happened to gloves? They have died out a bit. Um, they were supposed to help the marking. Yes. yes. They helped the ball skills, the, the ground ball, the pickups. But I don't think it has worked. Uh, uh, so I no. think we're redesigning and the new technology that's soon to come out, maybe next year. Uh, so CSIRO are looking at gloves, are they? It's, uh, <laughs> Could be. Handy gloves. The other thing that struck me was, uh, was uh, lightning. There was a lot of lightning about. Now, it looked to me as if there was an accident waiting to happen. Now, I believe five or six soccer players were hit by lightning on the weekend. Now, the lightning got very close to Optus Oval. Uh, someone's going to get killed, hit by lightning. <laughs> now, what's the Players Association's position here, Anthony? We should have walked off, actually. You should no, have walked off. Yeah. Actually, the guys that got hit were in Thomastown, where I was born yes. and grew up. Yes. Yes. Fellow friends of mine, and they're not too good at the moment. No, so they wouldn't be. We're very lucky at Optus Oval. Well, things like that just don't happen. Yes. Right. Now, are you... <laughs> It was not like The mate. lightning was pretty bloody close, wasn't it? Well, we could see it from where we were where? sitting now. Look, are you entirely happen, happy with the siren at the end of the match at Optus Oval? As nearly as I can tell, I don't think I can do a proper impression of it, but sort of... Game over! 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 And it goes on and on like that. I got the idea after a couple of... Game over! Game over! That sort of, I got it pretty clear that was the end of the match and Carlton had lost. Now, I think you owe it to the fans yeah. who come to Optus Oval to go back to the old-fashioned <laughs> like that to indicate the end of the match. Well, that was, was supposed to have happened. Oh, the right. siren had a malfunction to it, so... <laughs> it, got hit by oh, it was just like a boot up the date after a man. After that, it, was, it was Set it. everyone out with a headache. Yeah, I've never heard that before, so... Right, no, it's the first time. Now, uh, 
another match was on in Melbourne at the same time under the roof of Colonial Stadium. Now here we have a perfect reason why you should never close the roof of Colonial Stadium. Partly because the grass will never grow, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> but because I believe conditions should suit all the teams playing on the same day. So here we have one team with a whopping percentage boost, and you guys, admittedly you're lost, but poor old Adelaide, if they could have got a wriggle on, could have thrashed you by about 15 goals if the conditions, if they'd played inside at, uh, you know, Colonial Stadium. What's the Players Association going to do about that? <laughs> Apart from the bloody siren at the table. There's more work to be done there, I think. There is. Yeah, no, I guess it is a bit unfair yes. for us, um, playing in those wet conditions. Uh, it's a bit, bit different nowadays, having the roof closed. Um, certainly help the teams and um, to recover also for the next week will certainly help them yes. more than us. Did you watch the Logies last night? Yes, I did. Was, was, did you enjoy Bert? Wasn't he great? It was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Look, Anthony, a very belt good. buckle comes your way. Uh, very thanks much, very mate. much for coming in and reading the news, which you did so thank brilliantly. All the best with Carlton for the rest of the year. And can you please thank Anthony Kudafini! <laughs> number there, yeah. Matthew McIver fell off his push by Ben's there, is he? Yep. Alex Horton there? Yeah, I don't know. Yep. Michael Matt is in Hong Kong. <laughs> Fellas, we're gonna be short, we're gonna have to really try hard today. <laughs> Alright, so we lose so what? What's our most important objective in our game? Have what fun, are we have fun. What are we gonna do guys? Have fun. Well done guys, let's go, come on. Yes, mate. Yeah, run with them, Dave. Get them started. He... Oh, bad luck. You get done and you get a goal, right? Oh. Bad luck, mate. Oh, bad luck. Good play, good try. Listen, we listening? Two on the scoreboard. What? Two goals. We've kept them, we've kept them, we've kept them down to two goals. Let's get out there again. Let's warm up, keep running around, take a little jog around, Robbie, and let's get out. Come on. <laughs> Get across, get across! You know he's going out there. Well done, Rhino! And what a shit! Keep running, mate. It's not that cold now. That's it, that's it. Good boy, well done, guys. Not for lack of trying and not for lack of working. We're at least keeping warm and having some fun and enjoying it. All right. What we're going to do this quarter is do exactly what we've been doing. Get out. I know we're cold. I know it's wet. And we're going to get here and we'll have a real red-eyed Joe kicking a couple of goals and finishing the game off with two or three goals. Oh, go on, Alex. The kids are out there in the cold and I'm out in the cold with them. I don't believe that uh, the players should be out there getting soaked and wet and the coach been sits in a nice, cosy, warm spot. It's not on. It's, uh, they've got to bear it, I've got to bear it. He's good. Oh, hey, that's him. That's a holy man! Guys, bad luck. What a great effort, though. Very proud of you. Now, run into the rooms where it's dry and we'll get the parents in there to they can put their hands together for the effort. We can't change the result as long as the kids have had a good time and they're all probably frozen anyway. But, yeah, look, they're happy. They don't care about winning and losing. There's no gold medals for it. They're just having good fun. They love it. That's uh, Peter Bell there in charge of the uh, Williamstown under-11 Seagulls. He took the team down to Werribee. And obviously the uh, score didn't favour the Seagulls, but uh, they were having fun, right? Oh, they had a great day. <laughs> yeah, 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 beautiful day out. Um, Roy, uh, an incident's been um, reheated from some time ago at uh, Carrara where the Brisbane Bears had a problem with one of the players under while the Bears were being coached by Robert Walls. Mm. And they decided to uh, actually teach this player a lesson by punching him in the head. Uh, <laughs> taking turns with the uh, gloves on. Mm. Now, does a punch in the head help a player improve his football game? Uh, <laughs> look, H look, I think it's, it's a context thing. Yes. It's a context thing. 
and uh, and you've got to deal with players in terms they understand. Mm -hmm. Now I can't, I, I don't know Shane Stemple, Shane Strimple all that well. Beautiful name. But if he was the sort of bloke <laughs> that a punch in the head would bring him around, yes. and obviously uh, the coach thought so, uh -huh. uh, then I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh -huh. But I think history shows that it didn't make a bloody <laughs> jot of difference. <laughs> bloody difference with a bloke, did it? <laughs> but you can see how frustrated coaches must get. Uh, now you can tell a bloke so many times, I want you to do this, I want you uh, to do this. What, yeah, no worries, coach. Then does completely the opposite. Uh, Stays out all night, partying, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Uh, Arrives late at the game. Uh -huh. It sets a bad example. Yeah. What's the coach got to do? Uh, Eventually you get a ring of Bruno's. Yeah. And you put him in the middle and you uh, punch him in the head. Yeah. And you just hope. Fingers crossed it's going to work. Yes. Do you think universities and the CSIRO should prove it one way or the other, definitely? Yes. Take some dud players and punch them in the head and, you know, maybe 15 and a yes. sample group. I forget what you keep a sample group who you don't do it to. Yes. Of equally dud players and just yes. compare the results. Compare the results. Yeah. Yes. Compare the results. Now, Grassy Granell, of course, your great coach, uh, R.I.P., uh, he had oh, no, a lot... No, 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 he's still with us. Oh, he's still with us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the sick list there for a little while. Wasn't he? <laughs> sorry, mate, no, he's still with us. Oh, yeah, sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, get on your grass. Hang in there, bro. <laughs> you cheated the Grim Reaper yet again. Now... He was a pretty weird guy with a lot yeah, of unusual... Was. <laughs> Obviously very weird. Ahead of his time. <laughs> uh, look, he had a lot of unusual training techniques. Yeah. Did he ever suggest the ring of fire and the punch in the head? Uh, not quite. Not, right. not quite, no. no actually. Look, he had a couple, couple of techniques he'd use, you know, if his players were uh, acting untoward. Uh, one was, uh, at night, uh, he'd, uh, he'd say, Right, uh, you're going to service the car. Uh. And uh, he'd put a blindfold on you, and he'd go over and uh, get his... Uh, Ford Custom Line and bring it over, lift up the bonnet, leave the motor running, rev it up, and you'd have to grab the fan belt. <laughs> and a uh, couple of blokes lost fingers. Uh, but they learned. Mm. <laughs> they learned. Mm. And I think you got in a bit of trouble with police uh, because of the loss of fingers, because we didn't have microsurgery in those days. You couldn't just whip down to the hospital and have them put it back on. Yeah, or watch all saints and work or out watch all the dudes. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, the other was, uh, so what he changed it to was uh, if, um, I remember one time, you know, I, I just bought my car and uh, I had about 36 months uh, to go on the down payments, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you got a can of petrol and poured it all over it and set fire to the car. Right. <laughs> so then I had 36 to, weeks of down payments or months of down payments, I should say, on, on just a heap of rubbish. Uh. <laughs> I learnt my lesson. Uh. I learnt my lesson. <laughs> did, did and, and if that didn't work, then ring a Bruno's. Ring a Bruno's. Now, he did, have a, he did have a genuine ring of fire, I understand, especially in the summer months of when you, you know, came back from the long break, mm. where he'd pour petrol all over the oval and get you to stand in the middle and then torch it around you and yes, see who's right. first out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, through the, uh, the, yeah, the yeah, uh, smouldering right. Smoking, flaming yeah. ruins of uh, what's yeah. uh, what was it called? What's for Oval? What's for Oval? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Can or you he'd break into your house at night when you're in bed and uh, take it with a baseball bat? Yeah. <laughs> just, and while he hits, you said, "Wake up yourself." <laughs> now, now, was there any evidence? That one never worked. No. <laughs> was there any evidence of these techniques producing better results? You know, on. A weekend. No, look, I think the very opposite. You yes. know, when uh, grab the fan belt, we lost four players through lack of loss of fingers. fingers. Yes. Uh, we lost the match the following day. Yes. Uh, yes. When he tor torched my car, uh, mm. I didn't play very well. You know, uh, and when the baseball bat, obviously that didn't work either. No, none of those techniques worked. No. And nor did the ring of Bruno's ever work. No. And it doesn't because it just injured the player. Yes. And I think that's what happened with Shane Strample. Yes, yes. Well, he lost a lot of interest in the game after his punch in the head, I think. That's I think that's right. He was a great loss to the game. <laughs> and I, I feel he would have been one of the great players, Shane Strample. Gee, that's a big call, right? It is a big rap. Yes. <laughs> we'll leave you pondering that and be back with more dump right after this. <laughs> Look, there's been a phenomenal response to the uh, Ricky Martin poll, Logie poll that we said earlier in the evening. Roy, you've got those results now. I do, HG. I do, and they are as follows. The question was, at last night's Logie's international singing star, Ricky Martin, A, mimed quite convincingly, 8%. Yes. B, insulted the audience by miming, 11%. Right. C, 
mimed as well as Kylie. Only 18% agreed oh. with that. D looked really stupid miming. 63%. <laughs> But I think that's right. Yeah. I think that's right. It did look stupid. I feel a lot more confident now, you know, really saying Ricky's a goose, having seen yeah. the nations behind me yeah. in that regard. Look, I was prepared to like Ricky. Yes. <laughs> you know, she bangs. Great idea. Uh, Tricky tune. Uh, uh, <laughs> Brilliant idea. I mean, who would have thought? A song about... Well, that pony. <laughs> that, that pony. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You got the idea looking at those nudes we showed Probably. earlier. <laughs> Now, the emails, Roy. While the show's been on, people have accessed the website. I have. Stevie D from Sydney. I tell you who gets up my nose. Ricky Martin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys should uh, hold a competition, maybe in conjunction with the Logies Committee, let the winner, King, hit Ricky while he's mining. <laughs> That's very good. Because that would be good. Yes. Because he'd be there. You know, she bangs, she bangs, she bangs and whack, yeah, that's right. and the song keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, without missing a beat. No. Yeah. I've got one here from uh, a chap who wants to be the first to get his name on the dump. Here it is, Peter Zelagi. Hey! Yes, good on you, Peter. Well done. You got another one there, Roy? Uh, yeah, don't I recall Roy being tackled by a spectator in the 1972 Grand Final? No, I don't think that's right. No. I don't think that's right. That's a uh, killer from Queensland uh, with a... <laughs> Good on you, killer. Yeah. Um, obviously with a memory problem. And there was, some, uh, there was someone complaining about the, the uh, boxing gloves, wanting to know what the significance is. Yeah, well... Well, I would have thought the ring of fire we're well, talking about. Yeah. It's been on and on well, and on all night gotta about bloody it. Bloody spell everything out? <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, that... Net address again, the Monday dump dot i7 dot com dot au. Yes. If you want to contribute to the dump on yeah. any night that we're on air. Yeah. But uh, so or even when we're not on air. Can yeah. you contribute no, you, during the week? You can. You can. Can course. you really? But I like watching a show and being able to tap away. Jesus Christ, what's going on here? You know, look at it. I've got to get that in and all that sort of oh, stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. I love that too. Yeah. And any Ricky Martin ideas, keep sending oh, them in. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pass them on to the management. He's really touched a chord, hasn't he? Look, can I thank the audience tonight? You've been fabulous. The people from the Cromwell, the people who won the prizes, the people from the Herald Sun, it's been great. And the Colonial Bar staff. Roy, we're off and running. We'll see you next Monday night. Thanks for being part of the Monday Dump. Bye, Dumpsters. Yes, stop, stop, enough, enough, enough. Save your energy, ladies and gentlemen, yes. Uh, welcome to the Monday Dump Dumpsters, and uh, welcome to uh, this show for another...